How's it going everyone? And in this video, we're gonna be walking through how you can use code build in AWS in order to test your Python packages. And so what I'm gonna do in this video is walk through the entire story of making a repo. I'm gonna specifically use code commit in AWS so that we can easily connect it with uh, code build. You can also do it with GitHub, um, but I'm gonna stick with AWS for now. Um, and so basically we're gonna be supplying some Python logic uh, and some test logic into this repo. We're also gonna be providing a buildspec.yaml file such that code build knows what to do when it looks at this code. And we'll also walk through how to interpret the output from our test stage coming from uh, code build in AWS. So we'll get started. So the very first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm at the AWS console. I'm going to type in code commit. And so this is basically Amazon's GitHub. It's where you can create your own repos. And I am going to create a repo. I'm gonna give this thing a name. I'll call this vs-repo. You can call it whatever you'd like. Uh, and I'm not gonna really do anything. I will note that if you enable Code Guru, uh, you will get charged over time because uh, if you do enough commits to this repo, basically Amazon has a little automated code reviewer that'll scan your code for any syntax errors. Um, but in our case, I'm not really gonna be using that. Uh, and I am also signed in right now on root, which is bad practice, uh, but uh, that's okay. I'm not gonna change anything here. I'm going to leave this as an HTTPS connection. Um, and that is basically it. So we scroll to the bottom of the screen. We can see we've got an empty repo. And so I'm going to click on create a file and I'm going to paste in some stuff I've already written earlier. So I have some Python methods right here to do some basic functions like adding and multiplying. And uh, I'm gonna call this file ops.py just so we know uh, that it's doing some kind of operations. I'm gonna just give it some generic credentials here just so I can finish this. I'm not gonna commit it. I'm not gonna add a commit message, but I will commit these changes. Um, and so I'm gonna create this first file. And so now my repo has one file in it. Uh, I wanna add some more stuff though. So I'm gonna click back on repos. I'm gonna go back to that repo I just created. We're gonna manually create another file inside of here. And we're gonna call this one uh, testops.py. And as you would imagine, the purpose of this guy is to test using PyTest all the operations that we've just defined in that first Python file. So I'm gonna call this test underscore ops dot py. Another thing is if you are using PyTest, you really wanna make sure that you prefix your Python file names with this test underscore, and that's how PyTest will know to actually call this thing when it's running. I'm gonna again just give it some basic fields so we can commit this guy. And then on top of that, I have a buildspec.yaml file. And so um, we've got actual, actual Python code living inside of this repo now. But in addition to that, I want to include a build spec file because when code build is actually gonna look at what's inside of here, it needs to know what to do. And so I'm gonna click on add file again, I'm going to now paste in my code. Uh, for my YAML, and I'll provide this on GitHub in a public repo so you guys can just copy all this stuff just like I am. Um, but basically what's going on here is we're saying that Python 3.7 is gonna be our runtime in this environment, then we're going to be installing the PyTest package uh, to this environment. So when code build is actually building and testing uh, your Python package, it's really spinning up a little Docker container. And so um, it needs to know what to do inside of this Docker container such that it can actually uh, move forward and test your code or, or do whatever other build operations you wanna do, like connect to a database or something like that. But for the sake of this generic example, we're gonna keep it like this. Um, and you have to make sure that you do call it buildspec.yaml to be very careful because that's exactly the file name that code build will look for. I'm just gonna again, give it some info so I can commit these changes. And just like that, we've got a code commit repo uh, that's been created for us now. And so uh, that's the first step here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to open up another AWS console tab and I'm going to type in code build. I'm gonna open this guy up just like that. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a build project just like that. And I'll call this VS repo test stage or something like that. You can call it whatever you'd like. Uh, and I'm not gonna add anything here for the description, although you should if this is a production environment. Uh, and we are 
going to now have to tell code build where to look for the actual repo that we want to be building and testing. In my case, I'm doing code commit. If you had this saved in an S3 bucket, you could point to the S3 bucket right here. You could also do uh, these other providers like GitHub right here, um, but uh, you have to authenticate with them, obviously. In my case, we've already created that repo. If we hadn't, we would need to go and create one before we could actually reference it. And now I'm going to reference the specific main branch uh, that exists on that repo. And so uh, I filled all this stuff out. And in terms of the environment, uh, this is where uh, when code build is actually running, it is going to need to make uh, an environment. And so on the free tier, just so you guys know, you get 100 minutes a month uh, of, of use time with the uh, build tools here because you are using compute resources to actually build your project and test it. Um, and so in my case, I'm going to choose Ubuntu. Uh, Ubuntu is great for running the uh, Docker containers that we will be using. I'm going to go with standard runtime and just reference the latest standard runtime, which in this case is 5.0. Uh, and we're just always going to use the latest version. And we're going to go with the Linux environment type. And I'm going to leave all these other things as default. Note here how we are creating a new service role. So basically, code build is going to need IAM, uh, an, an IAM role such that it is able to uh, access that stuff like in code commit to actually grab those files. Otherwise, it would uh, not be able to do its job. So it's going to create one by default here, so I'm going to leave that, which is great. Um, and I'm going to also say that uh, you can see right here, if you didn't call your file buildspec.yaml, um, you could call it something else, um, and you would have to just reference what that name is. But by default, it's expecting a file in that repo called buildspec.yaml that we have. And now what we're going to do is we're just going to leave all these things unchecked. Uh, and I'm not going to have any artifacts from this. Uh, and so once we get fancier and down the road, once we're comfortable with this process, we can put this into a pipeline. So this will be a stage. And so after we finish up with code build, this would output its artifact if it is successful to something like code deploy, such that we can get our uh, code to a Lambda function or to an EC2 host somewhere so that we can actually run our new latest revision of our code. Um, but in my case, we're going to leave it as no artifacts right now because we're just playing around. I'm going to uncheck CloudWatch logs um, because I don't want to get billed for it. But if again, if this is a production environment, you most definitely would want to be logging this stuff. You can also choose S3 logs um, up to you. In my case, because I'm cheap and I'm just playing around right now, I'm not going to be doing this. And now I'm going to click on Create Build Project. I'm just going to let this thing go for a little bit. All right, and so now our little build project has been created and I'm going to click on start build. And so this is where the magic's happening. Um, and so it's basically going to be doing all those things we've been talking about. So it's now going to look into this repo that we've got right here. It's going to download the actual code uh, from it. And it's going to also look at that build spec.yaml file that we've defined and it's going to run those commands that we told it to. So it's going to install PyTest, it's going to run those PyTest operations, and then it's also going to be exporting a report of the PyTest stuff here. And so I'm just going to give this thing a moment and then we'll come back to the action. All right, guys, and we are back. So it just finished, it didn't even take a minute. And so here we are. Uh, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click back on my build projects name right here, the VS repo test stage. And I'm going to see that under my build run here, we had it succeed, which is great. And so if I click on it, I can see a little bit more information. Um, I can click on the phase details. We can see all the phases that code build went through. We can also see the reports that happened. Um, and so because we had PyTests here and we had this test ops.py file where we're defining how to test the unit tests for our logic, uh, code build is smart enough to find all those things, which is pretty awesome. And we can see that it is telling us that all these things completed successfully, which is great. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, go back to our uh, code commit repo, and I'm going to intentionally create an error in here so we can see how things look like when, you know, someone like a, a bad developer or something or, you know, a mistaken developer uh, puts in some kind of error and commits it to your main line. Um, so I'm going to add two to the add method. I'm going to subtract one from our multiply method. So I'm going to say, you know, bad guy, uh, email bg at gmail.com. And we're going to commit these changes. And so even though 
you know, we've just committed these changes. We don't yet know because our code build hasn't run yet. So I'm going to go back into my code build uh, dashboard. So I'm going to code build report groups. I'm going to click on my uh, actually, sorry, code build. And then we're going to click on the build projects here to see uh, the actual build that we've created here. I'm going to click on its name. I'm going to click on start build. And this thing is now going to run again. And we're going to see what happens now that we're going to have some of our tests fail. So we know what to do in that situation as well. So we'll be back in just a sec. All right, guys, so code build just finished and it's giving us this failed status, which is what we expect because our tests aren't passing. And so, you know, if you're like, oh my God, what do I do here? Uh, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to see that it failed. We're going to click back on the, uh, the, the build project name itself. And under build history, we can see that it is showing us that we've got a failed build right here. Um, you can also tell us how long it took, so only a couple of seconds, which is great. Um, but I'm gonna click on the specific build here that failed, and you know, it's because we wanna investigate why. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, click on phase details. We can see how it's going through these phases, but once it gets to that build phase, it is kicking the bucket. So um, if you click on reports, this is where it gets really cool. You can click on the specific report here and then see exactly where did things go wrong. So um, in my case, what I'm seeing is that the multiply and add unit tests failed. So I click on a specific test name. It's telling me that um, it's, a, it's expecting when I multiply two and three to get six, but it's my method, my multiply method is actually returning five. And so um, this is really helpful debugging logic to have. Uh, and it does the same exact thing here for our add unit test. And so it's telling us like, you know, we're getting uh, a much higher number than we expect from this unit test. So again, uh, this helps us as developers say, okay, let me go back here to my repo and then do some debugging or deep diving into why is my code not working the way I expect and then resolve these errors just like that. So um, pretty cool stuff. And then, you know, once we fix these errors, we would basically just run another code build. You guys should know how to do that by now. <laughs> um, and so uh, that is how we can get up and started running our actual build and test stage in AWS using code build. So I hope this video is helpful. Thank you all for watching. Let me know if you have any questions and be well.